Hi there guys, it's Emil from Gloss Boss. Today we're going to be applying a ceramic coating to this beautiful boat. But before we get into applying the ceramic coating, we're going to have to do some cup polishing and gel coat corrections to get the surface perfect to apply the ceramic coating to. So in order for us to do that, we're going to use a super cut compound. Now, the reason why we're going quite heavy duty on the compound stage is, as you'll notice, the surface is quite chalky or oxidized. And this is a result of not having enough wax or sealant or ceramic coating to protect the surface from getting oxidized. So we're going to start with a super cut compound over the whole surface. It's going to cut past that oxidation. And then we're going to use a secondary stage, which is our more refined polish to really further cut into the gel coat and produce a really high gloss surface before we seal it with our ceramic coating. We're going to show you the different methods. We're going to be using a rotary polisher today and we're going to show you the different pads and the different methods we're going to use to cut through the oxidation and correct this surface before we do a complete ceramic job on it. So today we're going to be using our specialty supercut compound. Now, I always like to prime my nice foam pad before I apply it to the surface. So I will prime the pad just slightly a little bit, just to put a little bit on there so it uh, kind of adds polish and I'm not trying to take polish from the surface. It already has some in the pad. And I'll also apply just a little bit to the surface as well. We're going to need a liberal amount of polish on this one because the surface is so oxidized and we really want to cut past that oxidation or as I like to call cancer. If you don't cut through the cancer, it'll form back a lot quicker and it won't take much for the oxidation to come back. But if we cut through it and seal it, it should last for a really, really long time. So we're going to start with the buffer on the lowest setting. And what I like to do is I give it a few little micro clicks like this just to evenly spread the polish around and as I'm doing it I'm actually um, when I when I put the button on full trigger here I'm going in kind of a crisscross pattern making sure I get all angles of the gel coat Now that we've applied our first stage of compound, we're going to want to wipe off all that compound to reveal an unoxidized surface below. We can really see what still needs a little bit of polishing and how the surface looks after the first stage. As you can see, it's gotten a lot of high gloss back into the surface, but it isn't quite perfect and that's where we'll use our second stage to really enhance the surface. Okay, so now we're going to apply our secondary stage. Now what I'm using here is the Imperial Compound and Finishing Material by 3M. I find it's a really good finishing compound for boats. Uh, it has a high cut and a high shine. So we're going to use that to diminish any swirling that we would have created from our supercut compound and to further refine any oxidation to cut it and to refine any scratches to reveal a nice shine underneath. So same as we did on the first stage, we're going to apply a little bit to the pad to prime it, a little bit onto the surface. I find with this polish it goes a long way. So you're going to give it a few little taps here. Okay guys, so I've applied the two stages of compound polish and I'm just wiping it off and you can see that the surface is super shiny and slick now, high gloss. Now if you start comparing it to the other areas where I did not cut, now the difference between a clear coat on a car and a gel coat on a boat is the gel coat has an epoxy already into the, the paint, which is the gel coat, whereas a clear coat or a paint job on a car has the paint laid down and then a clear coat on top as your protection layer and your shine. So boats are designed to get oxidized and be buffed and get oxidized and get scratches that can be buffed out. The gel coat is put on quite thick so we're able to do this kind of process. So the normal oxidation you'll see in a boat you won't see in a car because gel coat oxidizes at a different rate than car clear coat. 
So we have to do a lot more visceral and deep, intense polishing on a boat, more so than you would on a car, to get the oxidation out. So we want to let you guys know that it's going to take a lot more effort and polishes on a boat sometimes to get the oxidation to come out. But in this case, it was two stages, and you can really see a difference here that we've done, and we hope this helps. All right, guys, you can see I'm a little dusty, covered in compound goo. Well, the boat's starting to look amazing. I want to show you a little boss tip here. So the big thing with these boats is they're all going to have these rub rails on the sides. Sometimes they're wood, sometimes they're just solid stainless steel, and sometimes they're a mixture of a weird rubber plastic um, mix. So with this one, it is one of those plasticky rubber ones, and you want to make sure it, when you're buffing that you're not putting a lot of pressure or putting the side of the buffer wheel into this rub rail, because what will happen is it'll leave these little dings and little marks that are almost impossible to get out without wet sanding and really feathering them out. So to make sure that you don't get yourself in trouble with this, you're going to want to just gently nudge yourself up onto these rub rails and not put a lot of pressure, putting more of the flat side of the buffer onto it and not digging into it, because if you dig into it, you'll leave these grooves and marks that are really tough to get out. Another tip I want to tell you guys about is when you're doing this stuff, make it easy for yourself. Use some masking tape and mask off areas of the boat that are going to get the buffer wheel black, like metal and stuff like this. That'll make the buffer wheel black. I didn't tape this off because I'm pretty darn good at doing this stuff and I don't, I know how to get the buffer to not actually touch that. But, you know, certain areas that are, you know, maybe a matte black plastic or, uh, you know, a silicone seal or something like that, you'd want to tape those off because the compound will get caked in there and it's almost impossible to get it out. You can eventually, if you push hard enough in it, you can actually burn through some things and it just makes more trouble for yourself in the long run. So tape off things and be careful of the rub rail and the plastics on the boat because you can harm these. So now we've completed all the paint correction, we've gone around, we've removed most of the masking tape, and now we want to prep the surface for our ceramic coating. So what we like to use is, a, if we're not going to wash the boat and de decontaminate and take all the polish uh, residue and stuff off with soap, we're going to use what's called a panel wipe. Now very simply, it's pretty much 25% isopropyl with 75% water, so we mix it ourselves in our own spray bottle. What you want to do is you want to apply it physically to the rag. Don't just go spraying it all over the boat or the surface. Apply it to the rag and then wipe it onto the areas that you want to apply your ceramic coating to. And it should be pretty easy. You just want to get all the stuff off the surface, any oils, any residue, going into the crevices and cracks and really just getting the surface ready for a ceramic coating. All right, guys, so just a review. We paint corrected or gel coat corrected all surfaces, uh, removed all the masking tape, and then we used a panel wipe to rid the surface of any residue, polish residue. So now we're going to apply the almighty ceramic coating. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your pen and apply directly to the gloss glider, prime it, nice line down the center. You can do it a little bit on the side too, another one. And we're going to want to apply to the surface in a cross hash pattern. You can see it's absorbing into the surface really nicely, adding a little depth and clarity to the gel coat. Now you're going to want to let this cure once you do a good section for about five to ten minutes depending on the temperature before you buff it off with a rag, with a microfiber rag. It's always good to have a couple microfibers, clean ones when you're taking this stuff off. Now that we've successfully applied the ceramic coating to this side of the boat, so it's time to take it off. So let's do that. So you want to get a nice 
microfiber as your initial takeoff, and then you want to have a backup one that you're going to use as your secondary to do the final, the final clean and clear wipe. Pretty straightforward if you've ever done any form of waxing or any sort of sealing. It's just kind of the same thing. Rub it in, make sure you get it all off. And then you come back with your secondary as a, just to make sure. You can never have enough clean cloths in this process. You don't want them to get too full of the liquid or it'll just be spreading it around, creating more work and potentially wrecking the job. All right, guys, so that was a complete ceramic application to this 25-foot boat. As you can see, there's a new found glory to this boat now. You can see a new gleam, a new gloss. There's a nice soft feel. This is what the ceramic does to the surface. We've also applied our top coat, which uh, gives it that extra shine and a little more soft touch as well. So, you know, it took roughly two guys around seven eight hours to do a boat this size uh, we paint corrected pretty much every bit of gel coat on this boat and you know it was a little bit of labor of love it's dark outside now but in the end of the day the results are phenomenal so we want to be able to show you guys that this isn't some magic act that only somebody in a shop or some detailing shop can do you can do this yourself with the right tools and the know-how that we teach you here so have fun doing it Thank you.